David Moffat, former CEO of what was then NZRU, joins us. Look, you've been on a number of other radio stations uh, right across the spectrum earlier today, David. What's the impression that that those hosts have that you have after speaking across the major national morning shows? Is everyone thinking pretty much the same here? Like, just what the hell is going on? Yeah, pretty much, I think, Mun. I mean, you know, I, 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 I basically think that... Um, Everybody feels that New Zealand rugby has dropped the ball yet again. The other thing, too, that was a common theme is where is Mark Robinson? Uh, and, uh, you know, he obviously is missing in action. Um, I don't know if they're hiding him away from the media or what's going on, but he, he should never have let uh, Dame Patsy front this. That's the job of a chief executive not uh, the chairman. It was unusual right from the off. I can tell you that we got a an advisory at quarter to 11 yesterday that there was a press conference at 10 past 11 Thorndon. So obviously, you know, whether that was a mistake or whether the timing was deliberate so that nobody could turn up and then a really bland one-page statement issued. And just on Pat, Dame Patsy for a second, I mean, I, I heard her, I read a quote from her yesterday saying that, oh, you know, this kind of thing is is common in high level sport and in you know, high performance sport. And and I thought, I'm sorry, but you know, get the Governor General for sure. But what experience have you got in high performance sport and high level sport? And then I look at the board and I ask the same questions. But going back to Robinson, David, well, you know, then then you were the CEO. Steve Chu was the CEO. Surely, being the CEO, if you're not in charge, you've got to act like you're in charge, don't you? Well, I think you've got to be in charge, Martin. I mean, there's no there's no other way to do it if you're a chief executive. I can't imagine any chief executive out there in the business world would leave it up to their, their chairperson to uh, to front and make, you know, make the running on this. And as you say, uh, their, their handling of their media is appalling um, and it defies belief that the people that are running their media are still in post, to be perfectly honest with you. Why, it's why, been a nightmare. Why do you think, you know, I mean, I keep racking my brains as to why this board of directors, who are all very successful people in their own right, and why do they run this company like this? And all I can come back to is that it's not their money. There's no personal monetary attachment to this. So therefore, they're playing with somebody else's money because none of them on the board would run their own companies like the way they run New Zealand rugby. And that's one of the great mysteries of rugby administration. Um, and it, this isn't the only place that that, that, ha that happened. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And mm. I've asked that question many times wherever I've been about um, board members who would never run their own companies like they want. And I think the reason for that, mate, is that they see this as a sort of hobby. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of them, are, uh, you know, li li like to uh, rub shoulders with yes. uh, the, uh, you know, the players. The other thing is, too, that quite often um, nobody knows who the hell they are, you know, in their own business world, but then all of a sudden they can... Uh, strut the stage. My other view is that I think that uh, their media people uh, read and watch, listen to too much social media, and and a lot of their decisions are based on what they think. Totally agree. You know, might might play well in social media instead of actually getting on and doing the job. The other thing that I would make about Dame Patsy is that you know she she talked about. If they didn't make this decision decision now, there would be turmoil after the World Cup. Well, I mean, you couldn't get more turmoil that's going on at the moment and for the past 18 months to two years. And w w why would there be turmoil after the World Cup? There would be an orderly transition from one coach to another. The, the All Blacks, unless they're going to play some Mickey Mouse game for CVC somewhere, haven't got a game until... The um, you know the June July window, so I don't understand what the what the hurry is. Yeah, all of us are thinking the same thing. David Moffat is the former CEO of New Zealand Rugby as well as Welsh Rugby and English Sport, and amongst many others. And you know, Ian Foster coming out yesterday with his press statement. We had him on the show last week, and and that extraordinary step where he took, where he thought he felt he had to speak. 
where does he where's he left now this is you know if you're the ceo david and put yourself back in that position at the moment the, your your major yep. employee is the All Blacks coach. I mean, forget the players for a second. He's the guy yep. that's in charge of that team. He's charged with winning us a World Cup. I mean, anyone in any job that's sitting there now, and I know you asked this question to Mike Hosking, that if you're sitting there, or if Sean you know, Plunkett said the same thing to me, Martin, you're doing a fantastic job. We, we absolutely support you, but at the end of the year, we're going to replace you and we're going to announce... I mean, I'd, I, I just don't know whether or not I would probably, you know, whether I'd be sitting here for the next six months thinking, well, wh- wh- why don't I actually go and work against you? Or why don't I go and do something else instead? You know, I just, I just don't see how this is good yeah. for anything to do with New Zealand rugby, the way it's been played. No, no, it's not. And, and, and you're right. I, I mean, the players will be thinking, oh, I wonder what I've got to do now to convince this guy that's sitting here overlooking the whole thing so that I've got a job after, after the World Cup. Or do they, you know, were they hoping that perhaps Foster might walk? I don't know. I mean, it, it's just so bizarre. Not even English football. No, as you know, no. I'm a, you're I'm a Tottenham an fan for way back, I know. Yep. And, 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 yeah, thanks for reminding me about the Arsenal being uh, top dog at the at top. Moment, yep. but, um, yeah, they are. But they're playing some, a good brand of football, unlike Tottenham. Um, I think we've got... He's a very good manager, but... Sorry, we're getting off the topic for a minute. But he's a very good manager, but I don't think he's a good manager for Tottenham. That's my view. But, anyway, getting, getting off that, even football doesn't do this. So, I mean, this shows a complete lack of respect for Ian Foster, and that's been shown, you know, for the last 12, 18 months. And uh, who, whoever's uh, advising them, they're presumably not getting their uh, HR people involved because you should never, ever treat anybody the way he's being treated. I've, you know, having gone through a couple of, um, and you know, times high profile employment disputes myself, I've been thinking about that actually over the last wee while and thinking that surely there's some employment law that, um, you know, is being, could be invoked here. Going back to where, where we sit right now, though. So a few weeks ago, it was Scott Robertson asked it. And look, in every media, every person on my side of the microphone, our responsibility is to ask these questions. What's happening with the All Blacks coaching job? Well, he let the cat out of the bag, didn't he? And then he got told off about that. Yeah. He appears on our show. We ask him again, and he says, oh, I can't say anything. I was on the naughty step last time, which is obviously you know, implying that, hey, he got told off because of what he said. Then Ian Foster comes on the show, and he says, look, I, you know, I just can't. I've got a job to do, and I can't. All this periphery noise. You know, so then we get from New Zealand Rugby yesterday, oh, no, we're starting the process today. I mean, honestly, you couldn't write a sitcom like this, David, because what are they all, th- do they just assume we're all stupid? Because that's, I, I can't I can't gather anything else from it other than we already know what's happening. We already know who the guy is. It's Jamie Joseph or Scott Robertson. In that case, why do we need a four to six week process? And why tell us that it's just beginning when clearly you've actually been doing it all along? Well, yes, absolutely, but but isn't that the way this mob operate? Um, and uh, you know, I, I had a bit of a a Barney with Corin this morning as well. You know, I said that I don't think many people actually respect New Zealand rugby anymore. Um, he took issue with that, and I said, well, well, you know, I I, I certainly think that, that they don't respect this current regime. No, not the administration. Uh, the they don't. Which, no, no, no. No, no. I mean, yeah, I mean, rugby's meant to be. You know what the All Blacks are, David. You've been in charge. Look, you know, the All Blacks yeah. is meant to be about loyalty, mateship, teamship. It's about no yeah. one bigger than the the whole thing. And you look after yourself. You know, you respect. Yeah, you watch each other's backs. You don't. I mean, this goes again. This is the antithesis of everything that to to actually do with that. It is, and one's got to wonder what the hell is going on. But I mean, it's it's not. This isn't confined to New Zealand rugby. I mean, there's a huge shit fight going on in Welsh rugby at the moment, you know, who are yes. just an absolute basket case. And then you've got, I mean, Leon McDonald's a good coach, but you've got all this noise swirling around Leon McDonald going to Scotland to replace um, Gregor Townsend. Well, what the hell would you want to replace him for, given the season that he's having at the moment? You know, and it, and it's um, it's I don't know. There's a new breed of chief executive coming in who think they've always got to be meddling and fiddling and and you know with no clear idea of where they want to go. Uh, it's just bizarre, mate. It's just I, I just shake my head. 
Well, what happens from here then? So we all sit here and we, you know, like a bunch of. It's like you know, I feel like we're, you know, I feel like we're we're kind of like those 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 um you know uh, heads at the at the old circus which should go back and bob side to side and they put the, you try and put yeah. the board. So we're just sitting here all like that with Mark Robinson at the head of the table and Dame Patsy next to him and and actually pretending like oh yes okay well we believe you now and we will wait for the next four weeks. It's just, it is it is farcical, isn't it? I don't know how they dig themselves out of this, but the thing that concerns me the most is that they don't even appear that they want to. You know, I just get this impression that they don't actually care. And that, to me, is the worst sign of all. That, that says that you people shouldn't be in charge because you actually don't have a finger on the pulse. You don't know what you're doing. But worst of all, you don't seem to care. No, and and as a result of that, a lot of people that I talk to don't care either. I mean, if you go back to the last World Cup, you know, our pretty ordinary performance there would have normally resulted in, you know, hand-wringing and tearing out of hair and all that sort of stuff, but nothing. No. Nobody seemed to That's care right. yeah. Yeah. Ab- about the performance then. And, and rugby in this country is actually dwindling. So instead of hiding away, Robinson should be out there pumping the game up um, pumping up what he's and being transparent and telling the people. I mean, the way that they did, you know, what you told me before, the way they did you know, announce this uh, media conference for for this uh, announcement, that is throwing crap in the faces of New Zealanders. They owe it to New Zealand, this country, who have one of the biggest, I mean, arguably a brand that, that's bigger than the New Zealand brand. And, and they just completely diss them with the way in which they, their lack of communication and, and transparency. And it's wrong because the average Kiwi is thinking, what the hell's going on here now? And then they walk away from it. Basketball's are, you know, now taken over as the biggest participation sport in this country. You know? And yet these guys, they don't seem to care about that. 